In this video, I'm gonna be explaining how to manage your client onboarding process inside of monday.com. I'll be recommending a suitable template board, how to edit that template board to be more applicable, and how to tie in your onboarding process with your existing CRM system. Welcome CRM crew, my name is Nick. Just before we get into the video, if you are signing up to monday.com for the first time, it would be greatly appreciated if you could use my link below. It really does help the channel out. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So once you log into monday.com, of course, you will come to the home screen. Now, like I said in this video, I'm going to be explaining how to manage the client's onboarding inside of your monday.com system. This is obviously a really, really important process for any business. So let's go ahead and move over to the workspaces in the top left hand corner here and we can go ahead and add the template. Just before I go ahead and do that, I just want to explain that I'm going to be using the CRM side of things inside of monday.com as well, as I'd strongly recommend using both the CRM and the onboarding process as they tie in really nicely between the two. Um, it works really, really well. So what we want to do is go to the add button up the top and go to choose from templates. Search in the top left hand corner, just search onboarding. And you can see down the bottom here, we have got the customer onboarding. Just go ahead and press the use button. This will take a moment to load and there will be two boards that load. And I'm gonna explain how the, how the board works, the board that we're gonna be using, and then how we can tie it into our CRM as well. So as you can see, the onboarding or the customer onboarding has now loaded. I'm just gonna drag this to the top here and then use the drop down menu or open the folder up again. You can also see we've got contacts now. If you are doing the customer onboarding inside of monday.com and you've got your CRM system elsewhere, then definitely by all means go ahead and use the contacts. It's exactly the same as the contacts inside of the CRM. I, however, like I said, I'm gonna be connecting this to our CRM system. So just use a three dotted button and go ahead and delete that board. So now we are left with the customer onboarding and we've got our CRM system down the bottom here. Now, as you can see, this is the customer onboarding process or page. And what we wanna do is customize this to fit our business processes or our onboarding process. But just before we do that, let me explain why I wanted to use the CRM system. So you can see here, this is client and this links directly to the contacts board that we just deleted, but we can also link it to the contacts from our CRM. And that is absolutely what we wanna do. With our onboarding, we're obviously gonna have contacts associated with the onboarding. It may just be one who is our point of contact or there'll be multiple people involved in the project. So what we wanna do is use the drop down menu, go to settings, go to customize board settings, and then we wanna disconnect it from the contacts board that we just deleted. Scroll down and you'll be able to see that you've got contacts in the CRM area. There you can see this column has reached its limit of connected boards as I am unfortunately on the free version, but if you're on the paid version, you can go ahead and press the connect boards button and that will connect to it. So hopefully that is a good example. And then you can change the name of this to maybe POC, point of contact or anything else, contacts involved, whatever you'd like. Now, once you've done that for contacts, I would then recommend repeating the process for accounts. So you could just go ahead, press the duplicate and duplicate the board. And then you could call this accounts. Ooh, just call it accounts here. So obviously we want to associate the the account, the actual client with our onboarding process as well. So by connecting the point of contact or contacts, let me just change it to contacts just for simplicity. By connecting the contacts and connecting the accounts, we can see all the contacts involved and the accounts as well. Now, one other thing that I would recommend doing if you know how to is adding a button in the deals area and when the stage of the deal equals one, you can press a button that says uh, move to onboarding and the deal will be removed from the deals area and then head over to the onboarding area to manage all of the onboarding. That would be a really, really easy way of doing it without having to manually re-enter all of the data if you'd like to. There is a little bit of automation required, but it is fairly simple. So you've got that. Um, connection made between the contacts and accounts and, we've, and then you can set up the automation for deals as well. Now you can see why using the CRM would be so useful. Let's work our way through the different uh, columns inside of our onboarding process that exist at the moment. So as you can see here, we've got CS, which I have absolutely no idea what this stands for. 
but you can connect obviously a user inside of your monday.com system i'm just going to use the drop down menu and delete this and then we've got sales as well so you can see the sales individual that was related to that particular deal if you'd like to and then you could add an onboarding manager or something like that that was probably what ces was anyway but you just add an onboarding manager so you could have a sales connection and an onboarding manager connection if you'd like to. Now moving on from here, I do just want to say it is entirely up to you how you want to design your customer onboarding board. Obviously no business is gonna be the same when it comes to onboarding. So feel free to work through all of the different options um, and all of the columns and make changes applicable. Let me just walk you through what already exists and then we can maybe recommend some changes, additional information that you want to track. So you can see here we've got onboarding dates and these are the days that the onboarding is going to take place. And you can look at the calendar if you have got the paid version of monday.com and you can see when the onboarding is going to be going ahead and you can manage that accordingly. Now we've also got progress and the progress percentage relates directly to all of these different status. Um, all of these different status options here and I'll come on to those in a moment. We also have contract value. So what is the value of this particular contract or this particular onboarding? This of course is going to be information that will come from the deals area. So we also have package here and this is gold, silver and light but obviously it's going to be product related for your business. You can obviously customize that whichever is most applicable however you'd like to manage it. And then we have time zone as well, which is actually quite interesting. So if I think about this in relation to my business, I work with businesses all around the world. So having a time zone is actually really useful, but for some businesses, it may not be at all applicable. So you can keep that if you'd like to or remove it. Remember that this is for onboarding. So you're going to be in constant communication with the client. So knowing when they're awake and when they're asleep is going to be very, very important. And then if we keep moving across here, we've got all of these different status columns. These are obviously here to be designed for your business to be customized accordingly. So we've got kickoff and that is working on it, scheduled, done and stuck structuring, which again is just open to interpretation or it is open to customization. This is very, very general. We've got implementation, work, schedule, working on it, done, stuck, asking for more info and then we've got training. So if I were to think about these different status columns for my business, the kickoff would be uh, the initial business um, consultancy side of things, so actually understanding how the business works. And then the structuring would be kind of planning on my end how the CRM system is gonna look or how the training program is gonna look. And then the implementation would be actually either designing the CRM system or creating the bespoke course. And then finally, it would be the deliverable of the product. So it would be either showing people how to use the training product or it would be showing people how to use the system. And then I could customize all of these status columns to meet how I would work as a business. And that is, of course, what you want to do. And then here we have the go live date. So this is when we anticipate going live, when the onboarding is gonna be completed. This could be a deadline date, it's entirely up to you. We also have live here, and this is just a tick box. I don't think this is gonna be applicable because I'll come on to how we wanna manage our columns in a moment and our different stages. Um, and then we've got QBR, which I think actually means um, quarterly business review, I think. Um, and you can see it's scheduled here. I strongly recommend do not manage this in the customer onboarding because once the onboarding's been completed, that's it, they're just a live client. We want to actually um, manage that sort of information in the accounts area and we can see the quarterly business reviews that would be managed in accounts. So I'm actually gonna go ahead, use the drop down menu and just delete this column and the QBR date as well, which was directly linked because I don't think that is applicable. We've also got success metrics, so employee engagement, high revenue, so what you achieving or hoping to achieve from the customer onboarding onto your product or service. So that is again gonna be open to interpretation or customization. Now quite an interesting one here, we've got risks. So you can just, as you can see, brief was delayed two days. If you've got any risks associated with this particular client, you can log the information here. Now, I really, really like this uh, final piece here, which is estimated hours, hours logged, and then delta, which is how many hours do you think it's going to take? How many hours have you logged and how many have you got left? So you can see here, they estimated 10 hours. It's taken 12, so they are minus two hours. So they are in a deficit for that particular onboarding. 
or a surplus, depend, depending how you look at it. But that's quite a neat little feature there. So if I move all the way back across, um, hopefully you've got the idea about connecting your contacts and accounts to your CRM. You can see how some of this information would be really, really useful. Now, I also strongly recommend creating a status um, and I'll go ahead and do that now, actually. If we go ahead, scroll to the far right hand side, go and press the plus column, create status. Let me drag this all the way to the very beginning because I think that is where I would want to have it. And then what we would want to do is replicate all of these different stages. So awaiting onboarding, onboarding in progress, paying customers or at risk. It's entirely up to you how you want to manage this. If these stages are not, and I assume they're not going to be directly applicable to your business, create them and then create a status. Now, the reason I recommend creating a status is because we can then create a Kanban view. So if we go to add view and just go to Kanban and then we can work off that status. So that was the status we just created and we'll be able to see each record in each stage and we can drag them from one stage to another. And it, I personally really like the Kanban view. I think it makes it really easy to manage all the information. It's also a different way of looking at things. So that is why I recommend creating the status and replicating the different groups. And then once you've done that, you can then automate. So if status equals working on it, move, or let's say if status equals onboarding in progress, move item to onboarding in progress group and you can get really really clever with it and then you can just see everything moving automatically based on the status information so you can update from can the kanban view and it will update on the board here just to keep on top of all of your information so that is how i would go about managing my onboarding process inside of monday.com i appreciate this video is very general it's going to be impossible for me to make a specific video for your business um, I've kind of gone off how my business would work. And so let's say, like I said, we've got all of these different stages, the kickoff structuring, implementation and training. I would, of course, change those names to how I how my business would work. The go live date for the end of the project and um, whether it's live or not. And then also the package. So what did they buy? Maybe CRM implementation or CRM training. We've got the value. So how much are they paying? And then onboarding dates. So when have I planned to do the development and also obviously the onboarding of this particular client. So it's very, very useful. And I do think it is best served when connected to your CRM because you could then go to your accounts and you'd be able to see that account onboarding. And especially if you've got multiple products, maybe you've sold them one product and they're already an account, but you're doing an onboarding for an additional product, you'd wanna see that information in the accounts area. So having everything connected makes a massive, massive difference. Just before I end this video, up the top here, we've got percent package tier. This is chart views and all of this. I am on the paid, uh, I am on the free version. If you're on the paid version, you're lucky enough to be on the paid version, you can access all of this information here. So that would be additional ways of managing your customer onboarding, of course estimated versus actual hours that'll be a very good insight into how, how things are going um, but this is the onboarding process this is how i would manage it and obviously customize the fields you collect um, and customize the stages if you are unsure on what fields you might want to track you would have as as maybe a suggestion additional information like login login information or login access you could have long form notes you could have time agreed time work which is already in there you could have documents sent, so any documents sent to the particular client or have any documents received. So sometimes I have to sign an NDA and non-disclosure agreement and things like that. You could have all of that information and you can manage that with the, um, the customer onboarding. How I would do that is actually mirror the files from accounts and just track it from the accounts area. That means you will never lose any information. And ultimately we wanna to get to onboarding where they are just a paying customer and everything is live or we do not want to end up in the at risk or maybe lost on boarding or whatever the case may be. Hopefully this video has been of value um, and you can begin onboarding your customers seamlessly inside of monday.com. Um, I will see you in a moment's time. You should now all be set to manage your onboarding inside of monday.com and you can manage each of the different stages of onboarding to make the process as seamless as possible. If you have enjoyed the video or found it at all useful, please consider giving it a like, possibly even subscribing. 
If you have any further questions at all, you are more than welcome to drop a comment below or you could email me as my details are in the description below and I will do my best to answer any questions you do have. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will hopefully see you shortly in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.